So, what's so special about the Gemini version 2? The first thing you'll notice is the twin engine design and the T-tail. This configuration keeps the prop wash clear of the fuselage, landing gear, and the tail. This translates to better efficiency. Think about it. Accelerating air with a propeller only to place the aircraft structure directly behind it is like trying to push your car while sitting in the driver's seat. Without any prop wash over the tail surfaces, Gemini's configuration allows for more consistent control inputs from the rudder and elevator. This makes flying Gemini more like flying a sailplane or a jet. The effectiveness of control inputs is now directly related to airspeed only and does not require trim when power is applied or reduced to the motors. Torque roll. Single engine aircraft tend to diverge on their flight path when power settings are changed, in part due to torque roll, and need to be retrimmed to say the least. Using counter rotating props in the twin configuration eliminates this unwanted effect. It also eliminates the effect of P factor on the airframe. When flying at high angles of attack, the propeller blades encounter the air at a different angle of attack on the ascending part of the prop arc relative to the descending angle. On a single engine plane, this would have the effect of creating an unwanted yaw moment, limiting the VMC or minimal control speed. P factor is not so noticeable during approach flare, and rollout. However, should the throttle be advanced at a very low airspeed and a high angle of attack, such as for a go-around, the effect of p-factor could be adverse. Even if airspeed is above the minimum control velocity, anticipating of the effect would be prudent for the pilot. Gyroscopic precession is another factor that affects single-engine aircraft. Gemini is also immune. Let's talk for a moment about what happens when a motor fails. If a twin-engine plane has counter-rotating props which rotate inwards, there is no critical engine. Failure of either motor does create asymmetrical thrust. However, it is offset partially by P effect and partially by torque in the needed direction, making it less critical than it would seem. Failure of one of Gemini's motors will require some trim and additional airspeed should be maintained on landing approach. Abrupt changes in the power settings should be avoided, however, there is no reason that the airplane should not be able to return safely and land normally. To see an example of this, check out the video where I landed the prototype Gemini safely after an engine failure. But wait, aren't aircraft with only one propeller more efficient due to the loss of kinetic energy through the generation of tip vortices at the prop blade tips? After all, a twin has twice as many propeller blades. Isn't this a little like going back to the biplane in terms of efficiency? Well, if propellers were wings, that would be an accurate assumption. The difference is that propellers are constantly rotating, turning their blades away from the straight flow, and vortices never get the chance to form on the blade tips, in the same way they do on wing tips. Hardly any kinetic energy is lost when an efficient propeller design is used. If you study the designs of other very high efficiency aircraft, including solar powered aircraft, high altitude aircraft, long endurance aircraft, you will notice the widespread use in many of the successful designs 
of the multi-engine configuration. It's easy to see a pattern. Multi-engine does not mean less efficient. To learn more about this and other misconceptions in aerodynamics which are common, see Doug McLean's video, to which I will post a link in the description below. We should probably also mention that with the motors and props out on the wings, the fuselage containing sensitive equipment and sensors such as cameras is further isolated from vibration. Other features that you will notice are the Gemini's T-tail and a healthy amount of dihedral in the wings. Keeping all of the drag producing components of the aircraft as high as possible, such as the wing and the horizontal stabilizer, and keeping the heavy components as low as possible, has a lot of benefits to stability. If the nose is pointed down, for instance, the geometry of the aircraft effectively moves the center of gravity back relative to the wing, increasing pitch type stability in a dynamic way and allowing for a near neutral incidence of the horizontal stabilizer. This also makes the aircraft more efficient by improving the lift to drag ratio. This is a lot more efficient than the traditional method. As we all know, dihedral in the wing and a high center of lift contribute to stability in the roll axis as well. That's why airplanes with a high wing are usually given less dihedral. Also has some benefits which we haven't really thought much about in model aviation since the days of free flight. Flight dynamics of an aircraft the size of Gemini allow for stability in spiral mode trajectory and simultaneous stability in Dutch roll mode. For more information about flight dynamics of fixed wing aircraft, see the Wikipedia article on the topic. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Another important feature of the Gemini version 2 design is the airfoil selection. I chose the GOE TT398 for its low drag while producing high lift at relatively low Reynolds numbers. It also happens to be a non-critical airfoil with a gentle stall curve and its overall shape lends itself to robust construction. I have been very happy with it and it has permitted Gemini version 2 to be optimized for carrying a large payload while maintaining excellent endurance and loiter capability. I'll put a link to the NACA coordinates and technical notes regarding the airfoil section in the description. Hopefully this has satisfied some of your curiosities and sparked many more. Please give us your feedback and share your ideas by commenting on this video. Make sure you visit our website to find out more about the Gemini project and see the modifications that others have made to the design. While you're there, you can check out our ideas for other advanced projects. Have a good one.